What's up everybody? It's Gabriel here with naturalwhetstonesharpening.com and today I'm going to show you the most common sharpening stone problem. So what I've done is I've gridded the stone with pencil and that lets me clearly see the surface. Now a lot of guys get a ruler out and they spend all this time doing really perfect grid lines don't waste your time doing that. Just put your hand on it like this and go across the stone. Good enough. It's got, you know, most corners touched with pencil. You save yourself that five minutes of drawing your pretty pencil grid. Then take a worn out diamond plate or a fresher, newer diamond plate if you're lapping a stone that is coarse. So for example, if I use 120 grit to lap the ancient ocean jasper, then this side of the stone will perform like a 1000 grit sharpening stone or coarser. If I use fine diamond to lap the surface of the stone, then the surface cutting action is smoother and slower. It polishes much higher and it will actually become a finishing stone. So that's what makes this stone dual grit, two different lapping preparations. The number one problem you'll face as a sharpener, if you don't have an ultra hard stone like this that's very dense, is that your stones will dish out. So this stone, you can see is almost perfectly flat, and this is right off of my saw blade that I cut it with. There's one little low spot right there, and you can check which areas still have pencil. And that will show you if your stone is not flat. You can expect that your stone is not going to be flat if it's something that dishes when you sharpen with it. So if you can take a knife and you can dig the tip into the stone, then it's softer than steel. This is LMAX, which is a very hard steel. And the Jasper just takes off a line of metal every sharpening stroke. So that means that I really don't have to worry about lapping this stone again once the fine side is flat. Now, after several sharpening sessions, the cutting action on the fine side gets even slower and even finer as it loads with metal. So there's that to consider. When it's freshly lapped, it's cutting at a quicker speed and it will quickly load with metal and cut finer. Another option for you guys, if you have a diamond plate, which is the number one thing to pair with the Jasper stone, by the way, is slurry and use the slurry. Now you won't have to reflatten this stone ever, but slurrying it releases any metal that's in the pores of the surface. So you get your cutting speed increased again. And also the stone is too hard to release a slurry on its own. So if you do this, you actually get a bunch of extra grit to work with. Now I'm bearing down considerably and I'm trying to be smooth because I don't want to gouge the corners of my diamond plate into the stone because that actually causes grooving and scratching. So just like this while you're flattening and if you have a soft man-made sharpening stone, that's one you need to soak or you have to keep splashing splash and go type sharpening, I would recommend that right when you're first wetting the stone, you also lap it. Because those stones are known to dish out every sharpening session, but if you keep up with it, you won't have to lap it for as long. Now, uh, ultra hard, ultra dense stone like Jasper is a real workout, and it shouldn't be nearly as difficult to lap synthetic uh, alumina bonded and resin bonded man-made sharpening stones. Whereas Jasper is extremely difficult to lap. And I can still see a bit of my pencil mark here. So I'm gonna give that stone spot a little more attention, but I thought I would just demonstrate why slurrying the stone like that is good. So just to recap, if you slurry it, you clear the steel, you free up freshly pulverized ultra-fine silicate abrasive, and you'll notice that the cutting action is quickly increased. Now, if you take this stone and you polish it up 
with lots of sharpening, eventually you'll feel like it's not doing much. That's when it's your ultra fine finishing option. But I find that for around a mirror edge finish or 30,000 grit ballpark, I find that just mellow, worn out diamond plates seem to give a really amazing surface preparation. The slurry will quickly transition you from a coarser edge to a fine one by eliminating rougher scratches. And every stone that I make and send out, I give this care and attention to detail too. And if I miss the little spot on the flattening or your stone gets chipped in shipping or something crazy like that, don't worry because I have an unconditional exchange policy as part of my warranty. And the reason I say that Jasper is a lifetime lasting natural whetstone is because it's so dense and it's so hard. So even though I'm grinding on it with a worn out 325 grit diamond plate, I'm only removing a few microns of material from the surface and it takes a long time to do that. It won't ever wear out from sharpening. So once it's planed in, how it comes to you right out of the box like this, it's ready to go. And you have the option of dressing the surface or not if you want your fine side to cut faster. And if you have reprofiling work to do, you can either sharpen right on that diamond plate pairing or take the back side of your stone. And on this one, it's lapped to a rougher finish. I prepared it with 120 grit. So the texture is actually showing more grit particles. So even though you have the same type of stone, you'll hear the big difference in the sound. Much more grabby. This side gives you a toothier working edge. And then if you switch to your finer side, you're then doing fine honing. And I like to sharpen at the sink because I can rinse off any particles. And you'll really feel the difference. The fine side of this stone is much more of a softer velvety cushion type of a feel. And it will put a razor sharp edge on your blade. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And if there's something you'd like to see in the next Sharpening Stones training video, just let me know. This is the Ancient Ocean Jasper. It's one of my more beautiful translucent ones, and this one's actually headed to Norway, so it's not for sale. And this is a Microtech in LMAX. So that was the steel I was sharpening with today. And so far, any steel I've seen thrown at these Jaspers respond perfectly fine, as long as you understand the coarse and the fine lapping principles about making the stone dual grit and how abrading the surface freshly opens the pores and clears any metal. If you only clean the stone with like a rust eraser, you don't regain the texturing effect that you get if you use a mellow or a rough diamond plate. So if you guys enjoyed that video, feel free to like and subscribe this video. And if you'd like to be a part of the community, come check out the Facebook group Wild Whetstones and I'll see you there.